When a user clicks a button, they expect the page to respond to their action and do something. Play the game, buy the product, display a message, something. For our JavaScript code to respond to an action on our page, we follow three steps. First, we find the element that can notify us of the action. Once we find the element, we listen for actions, called events, on that element. Lastly, we react to the event, running code when the event occurs. As an example, for our Guess a Number game, we find the button element. We listen for the button's click event, which occurs when the user clicks the button. And when we are notified of the event, we react, reading the user's guess from the input element. Since we already know how to find elements, let's look at how to listen for events and run code in response to those events. Recall that an event is a notification that an important action occurred. Events can come from the user as they click a button, scroll, select an element, press a key, resize the browser, and so on. Or events can come from the browser itself, as it finishes loading the page, for example. To listen for an event, we use the reference to an element we found, and we call its addEventListener method. We pass to that method the name of the event, enclosed in quotes. The name is case-sensitive, meaning it must have the exact spelling and casing of the element's event. We also pass a function containing the code to react to that event. In other words, the code we want to run when the event happens. We call this an event handler because it's handling the event when it occurs. When the code is notified of the event, this function is run, and the event details are optionally passed into that function. In this example, we log the event information. Notice the function name here. We don't include the parentheses after the function name, because we aren't executing the function here. Rather, we are passing it to the event listener. The function won't run until the event occurs. If we have a simple event handler, like in this example, instead of passing in the name of the function, we can pass in the function itself using an arrow function. Recall from earlier that an arrow function is shorthand syntax for a function. We define the event parameter here, an arrow, and the one-line function body here. Want to react to some events? Let's walk through how to listen for events and how to react to the event using a named function and an arrow function as the event handler. We are back in VS Code yet again with our Guess a Number folder open on the left and our page running in the browser on the right with the developer tools open. We want to listen for the event that happens when the user clicks the button. But how do we know the name of that event or even what events we can listen for? Let's open another tab in the browser and make it full size. Then we'll bring up the JavaScript documentation at developer.mozilla.org. Search for Event and pick Event Reference. Scrolling down, this table lists the types of events we can listen for. We can get clipboard events and keyboard events and so on. After the table is the event listing. Scroll down to the element heading. There are lots of events here. These are the events on an element. And here we find the click event. Click to view the detailed documentation. We see the information for listening to that event. Notice on the left we can scroll to see the other events. From this documentation for the click event, we see that the correct name for this event is click all lowercase. Let's try it out. Close the tab, and I'll rearrange the windows. In VS Code, we'll add an event listener to our JavaScript file. Below the reference to the button element, let's delete the console.log and add our event listener here. We start with the reference to our button, which is guess button. Then we call its addEventListener method. Whenever we call a method, we add parentheses and end the statement with a semicolon. We pass to the function the event we want to react to, in our case, the click event, 
be sure to close the event name in quotes. We also pass the event handler, which is the function that has the code to handle our event. Let's try an arrow function first. We specify the function parameter, which is the event, then an arrow, and let's log the event to the console with console.log. Do you think that will work? In the browser, click the Guess button, and we see the event in the console. It's a pointer event. Click the arrow next to pointer event and scroll down to see the details of the event. Wow, there's a lot of information here. Toward the bottom, we see the event type is click. If we were building a different kind of game, we may be interested in the exact location of the click, or whether the shift key was pressed. But for our game, we don't really care about any of the event details. We just want to receive the notification so we can read the guess from the text box and process it. Back in VS Code, we already have the start of a function to do that, our process guess function. Let's change the button click add event listener to pass in this function instead. We replace the arrow function with the name of our function, which is process guess. Note that we don't put the function name in quotes because it's a variable referencing our function. And we don't put parentheses after the function name because we aren't calling the function here. Rather, we are passing the function's reference. We want the browser to call this function when the click event happens. Now let's delete the call to process guess from here. It will instead be called when the user clicks the button. Next, we'll read the value from the text box within the process guess function. Recall how to do that? We first find the element, which we've already done here, and then we read its value as we did here. Let's delete this logging and delete our hard-coded guess. Scrolling down, in the body of the process guess function, we declare a constant for the user's guess, as it won't change while within this function. We'll use that variable to check if the user guessed correctly, and then use our reference to the input element, which is guess input, and access its value property. This gives us the value from the text box. Before we move on, let's cover a best practice for this code. Whenever we refer to an element we've found, it's always best practice to add an if statement around the element reference, just in case it's not yet found. So we'll add an if around guess input. Let's cut the log statement that displays the guess and paste it immediately after our constant declaration so we can confirm we've read the text box correctly. Next, we check the guess we've read from the element. We already have a start of that code here. We also want the if and else blocks within this first if statement. I'll cut the statements and paste them here. Now we can change this code to check if the guess matches the generated random number. Scrolling up, we see that the generated random number was assigned to this variable here. And since it's globally scoped, we can use it anywhere. We want an exact match, so we'll use equal 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 random number. Are we ready to try it out? In the browser, type a number into the text box and click Guess. The feedback text appears in the console. Feel free to try a few times, or we can see the random number here in the console, so type that in. Wait, what? When we type in the random number as our guess, it doesn't say you win. What happened? Let's try changing our decision criteria for the feedback to double equals and see if that works. Changing the code refreshes the browser, which generates a new random number. Type that random number into the text box. Click Guess. And now it says you win. That worked. When debugging this type of error, there are two things we should try. Logging the value to the console and logging the type of that value to the console. Let's add a type of to the console log for our guess. Enter the random number into the text box and click the Guess button. We see that our guess is a string, not a number. That's why the triple equal didn't work. Looking at the index.html file, we set the input element type to number. 
Why then is the value in the input element a string? It's because the value from an input element is always returned as a string. But since we set the type to number here, we have another option to get that number. Going back to the JavaScript file, we can change dot .value to dot .value as number. In the browser, type the generated random number into the text box and click the Guess button. Notice in the console that the guess is now a number. We can then change our decision criteria back to triple equals. Trying it one more time, in the browser, type the generated random number into the text box, click the Guess button, and we win! Now that we've resolved our issue, let's delete our extra console.log statement. We have some additional work to do yet to finish our game, so let's leave our editor and browser as they are and go back to the slides. An event is a notification that an action occurred. We listen for events using Add Event Listener. The first parameter is the name of the event. Be sure to spell and case it correctly. Use the event reference at developer.mozilla.org for the list of events. The second parameter is the event handler. It's the function to run when the event occurs. Past a named function or an arrow function. Next up, let's write to an element. Now that you know how to listen for and react to events, what will you do with all that power? Drop a comment below.